There he is. Bam. Claw. Oh, Vega Claw. Uh, dictator. Dictator. Um. There he is. Make sure that works. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, here we go. So, oh, he's he's Vega in Japan. Uh, that's Vega Dictator. Uh, then that's, um, well, technically it was uh, Balrog. But they, they switched everything around. It was, Balrog was supposed to be Dictator because he's the second brightest star. Then Balrog was uh, Claw, and M. Bison uh, was um, Boxer. Then they switched everything around. So Claw became Vega, second brightest star. Then... M. Bison became Dictator, and Balrog became Boxer. So they, they all switched. They all flipped. Taking notes. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they basically, like, took it and, and, and flipped it around and everything. Um, yeah, so basically... Uh, It all, it all got, it all got, it all got flipped. But the funny thing is, is that, uh, the names of it is all, is all different too. Because, um, Balrog means demon. And Vega means second brightest star. And M. Bison is M, is M, M. Bison, right? So, M. Bison uh, became our current dictator, the head honcho dictator, right? Then Balrog became boxer, and, you know, he's going around and training Ed. And then Vega, second brightest star, is Claw, and he's going back and forth with uh, G right now. So yeah, so back then they 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 took everything and then just sort of like, you know, kind of kind of flipped it flipped it around. Right, right, yeah, 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 and they and they said they said supposedly he had an I he said that. He didn't have an idea of it, like he didn't know. But then there's other things out there saying that he knew, but he was just like, ah, you know, he was he was okay with it. I didn't see a video. No, I didn't see a video on that. Uh uh. See here. Turn it up. Oh, I can't hear anything for some reason. Huh, it's at a hundred percent. Uh hmm. Oh, this is pretty long. Yeah, I'll have to watch it at some point. It's about four minutes. Yeah. What the heck here? Midway through. 2.31. I, I, for whatever reason, I can't hear it. Um, I can try again. Uh, yeah, it's like muted out. Uh, let's see here. 
Yeah, I still can't hear anything. I have it at 100%. Um, I don't know. That is weird. Rave. Let's see. Oh, no, it's there. Okay. Two minutes. Yeah, he's he's very good in ST. Very, very good in ST. Well, good for him. I mean, I had heard he had he had an idea, but that's interesting. Marvel 4 on the way, baby. Possibly. Possibly. That's right. That's right. That's very cool. That's very, very cool. Does it did he he didn't have his match against Logan yet, right? Was that? He didn't have it yet, right? Isn't it in July? Oh, it's in November? Wow, I thought it was I thought it was sometime this summer. I want to watch that so bad. <laughs> That's going to be a good one. Oh, he had an ulcer. Okay, so it was supposed to be earlier. Wow. Aw, oh, that's sad. Uh, I hope he can do it. I hope he can do it. I think he can. Aw, oh, that's a bummer. He's 58. He is. I think he can do it. I think he can do it. Well... Let's just hope. I'm sure there will be, you know, rules. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He could. Easily. But then, at the same time, well, you know, there have been some really good m matches where they hype it up, hype it up, hype it up, and then the next thing you know, um... They um, get in the ring, and then the guy gets knocked out in a round or two. And then people kind of go, oh, my God. But, you know, I mean, it's it's still worth it, but it was just very fast, uh, especially with all the money. There's so much money behind it. Um, if he knocked Logan out, I mean, that'd be pretty, pretty something else. But I would think they'd probably want to dance a little bit but maybe not um that would be something though oh it'll it's gonna be interesting for sure what's up there how are you what's up what's up oh i oh man i'm gonna watch that so bad oh man it's gonna be a good one you know yeah it's just because i want to see mike tyson <laughs> all right let's check it out Let's check out uh, Bison here. We're going to play through this first. And then we are going to um, go through it slowly and uh, review what is going on. Hmm.
Huh. That's very interesting. Let me take a look at something real quick. I'm curious about... Uh... Whoa, 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 whoa. Let's see here. Uh, close that. Close that. Close that. Close that. Let's see something. Do a new window here. Before we go through this, Yeah. So the voice actor for Bison is Titan Kusanogi Noki. And he is the voice actor for Heihachi in Tekken Bloodline, which is um that I that is the uh, Netflix show. <clears throat> yeah. Tekken Bloodline. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. So very, very cool there. Very cool. Um, so we have a, a voice actor there that um, he's span, spanning multiple games and animes and everything else. So let's go through this and um, really sort of see what's going on here uh, specifically. Now we do know that... He does have a new move. It's called Shadow Rise. That's a leaping move. He can uh, cancel that into his Devil's Reverse and the head, head Press. It's when he goes straight up in the air. The Back Fist combo leads into the Psycho Mines. Psycho Mines can self-detonate or you can access detonation through doing a Psycho Crusher and there's varying damage. The interesting thing is, is that Bison is all about rushdown, right? The funny thing is, is that even if now he's on the opposite side of the screen, you're still going to be feeling pressure because if he has that psycho mine on you, he's going to be pressuring you whether he's there or halfway across the screen. So that that's a very interesting concept that they did that. Uh, it, you know, it reminds me... In Halo, they had these sticky grenades, and you could toss them on people, and then, you know, you could just disappear, and then it would just detonate. You know, you didn't have to be anywhere anywhere around them at all. So, the very, very cool thing there, a way to um, really keep pressure and, uh, you know, force, uh, force the game to keep moving forward, uh, because of the damage the damage from these uh these sticky sticky um psycho mines there his uh level one is knee press nightmare the level two is reminiscent to uh there's a psycho punisher from street fighter 4 and they're saying that this is the same body from street fighter 5 it's that his memory 
is uh, has has been difficult for him to remember what's going on there with that. So very good with that there. Uh, one and two, one and two, yeah. No, they're saying that bison is basically uh undead. So he he'll never stay dead for long. He is undead. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, very cool. Okay, so uh a couple of interesting things here right off the bat. Bison would always sort of do this thing where he'd be like going like this, right? And the funny thing is, now he's going, oh, my hand, you know? And we would see off and on, uh, the psycho power would go and then just sort of burn up his hand and then flare up his face and he goes, ah, you know? So, I think it's interesting that now instead of him just constantly going like this, it's now, uh, he's, he's kind of going, oh my god. Um, so that's, that's really something in just his resting uh, continuous movement there. Um, so they're saying that he has a number of long-reaching moves uh, in six in particular. Okay, so... Um, Space creating strikes, special moves, control the neutral, uh, uh neutral, uh, strong there, uh, or forward, uh, medium kick. Uh, so here it says surprise your opponent with a shadow rise and its follow ups. It's a crouching, uh, or a low forward there that down low forward there's the sh uh, uh devil's reverse that looked like uh that looked like the uh um psycho axe Stuff was reversing in. Let's see that. Yeah. Okay, hitting the enemy with the back fist combo, you plant the psycho mind. So this is the brand new move. So back fist is new, new to bison in Street Fighter, period. And so is this whole Psycho Mine uh, new uh, special for him. So there it is on Ed right now. I think this is very interesting because it sort of reminds me of Amnesia with uh, JP. You know, you, you get <clears throat> near JP, he activates uh, Amnesia, you know, and it can it can follow you around. It can, you know, be right on top of you, right on you, you know, and everything. And then the next thing you know, it, it detonates. And, uh, you know, initially it had a very long shelf life. Um, and people were very, very concerned. Um, and uh, then they, they nerfed it a bit there, made it act, you know, detonate a lot faster. Um, so this is uh, very, very, very interesting. So this is when it's going to go off by itself, and, and you can see it just, it, it, it creates a juggle there. He could probably drive rush right in after that, or do a uh, scissor kick his way, or even a, well, you know, it, I'm, I'm trying to think of things besides the Psycho Crusher, because the Psycho Crusher just detonates it on its own, but I, I'm just, you know, there's other things he could try to do. 
You can try to do the slide. Okay, there's another one. And then he set it off. That was a nice juggle. Absolutely, it looks very good. It looks very good. The Marvel vs. Capcom, yes. Yes, it looks very, very cool. Um, it's a nice grouping of games. Uh, they did a good job restoring them. The music's really good. The art, you know, uh, they have the uh, marquee information going around. Online, uh, you know, availability for training room, rollback, leaderboards, ranked. Um, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 is going to have a really nice showing, and, uh, I bet this is going to bring back a couple of, uh, you know, uh, rivalries, uh, it's going to bring back a lot of retro, uh, players and everything, and then in addition to a whole bunch of new people. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so what makes what makes this uh, so crazy? His Psycho Crusher. Well, we've seen Spice and Psycho Crusher since the dawn of time. But the interesting thing is, is that in Street Fighter V, it was not a part of his base kit. They took it away. He now has access to it all the time again. And not only does he have access to it all the time again, but he has more options with it because when you have done your uh, back fist combo and you stick your little sticky mine on your opponent, you can Psycho Crusher over and detonate that little mine and then there's varying damage that you have off of your Psycho Crusher. That kind of reminds me of, uh, this is a little bit of a loose connection, but you have Aki. She sends over her poison ball. Now granted, I mean, it's traveling over there. And then she puts out her uh, serpent lash, her chain, and she snaps it. And, you know, it explodes, and it's um, a hit, and it's poison, right? Well, this is, this is sort of like that. You know, you're, you're breaking the bubble, and you're, you know, activating it, and you're creating uh, a situation. You're creating damage. With this, it's sort of like that, but at the same time, sort of not. He's putting the sticky mine on his opponent, and... He is the Serpent Lash. He is going over there as a Psycho Crusher, and then he is getting the damage through the Psycho Crusher. You could just wait for it to detonate itself, but, um, you know, applying more pressure uh, would lead to a uh, possible mix-up if somebody thinks that you're going to go for a throw or go for an overhead or something like that, and they're, you know, blocking or, or not going to tech, and then the next thing you know, they're going to get blown up. Or the eyed you could do that. Drive impact. So they're saying single hit projectiles stand no chance against the Psycho Crusher. Open to attack. Prove wily enough to block it. Do not use it recklessly. So this is what they basically said. You could go through one hit of a projectile, but then he has a big cooldown. So 
if you have a character where uh, after they throw out the projectile and um, their cooldown is very quick, they have a very fast recovery, uh, guile you know, comes to mind, then the next thing you know, they're already going to be blocking and then they are going to uh, get a really good confirm uh, on your negative frames, on your cooldown, um, because you're vulnerable after that. It's, it's, it's a lot. That sort of reminds me of um, when Blanca does his big hop to do a command grab, and then he goes, whoa, what happened? You know, because he is uh, extremely vulnerable at that point. Um, so, that's very interesting. Yeah, see, bam. Ed didn't put up with that. This is a good song. I like this song. So they're saying, you know, he's going to be uh, plus and uh, on the Overdrive VX. Why? Because you're spending for it, you know. So that I th that's you know that's fair. I mean, you're you're spending the bars. You're like a giddy teen in the arcade. For yeah, yeah, yeah. We were just saying that. We said um, we think that uh, everybody that had access to those machines in the arcade, the art that they have in there was probably also, I mean, besides concept art, but the art on the sides of the machines. And then they had the marquee art um, and the moves and everything. And they added that because essentially they're bringing those cabs in an electronic form to you, you know, which is, which is very cool, which is very, very cool. Yeah, they're trying to bring the, uh, all the cabs in, uh, you know, uh, online form. Not online form, but you know what I mean, like the, uh, uh, disc form well it, it you know they you do have a hard hard version of it but uh also uh downloaded one yeah okay double knee press we've seen this we know uh the classic good old double knee press here from bison Yeah, and depending on uh, light, heavy, uh, light, medium, or heavy, uh, will go the um, the direct uh, the length of the screen that he was going to travel. Yeah, and they're basically saying too, uh, you know, you have to watch your spacing on that. You don't want to commit too much because. Uh, you're going to be vulnerable with that. Overdrive gives you a launch. I always felt that that was, a, uh, that was interesting because, you know, really, you're talking about a guy that's, uh, you know, a military guy. And the other person that has a move just like that is Guile with his bazooka knee. So, I had thought that was an interesting type of move, even from uh, Bison in the past. But um, it's it's even more so now built into his uh, EXOD uh, scissor kick. Or oh, that's the knee press, knee press. Never mind the knee press. No, wait a minute. That's a scissor kick. Yeah, that's the same thing. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. It's like, wait a second here. Um, yeah, and because uh, there's so much going with it and it's so incredibly risky, he's going to have a big cooldown and then, you know, that's going to leave you vulnerable uh, with punish negative frames. It can be taken advantage of. 
so don't just put it put it out there okay so this is the brand new options here for bison for street fighter in general but uh street fighter 6 bringing it in Okay, there it is. So there's the uh, the new Psycho Mine stuck on Ed. Then he activates it with the uh, Psycho Crusher. So they say after a few seconds, if you don't do anything, it's going to uh, detonate. I mean, and, and no doubt you can, you know, be blocking and prepared for it, just like the amnesia from uh, uh, JP. But uh, one thing for sure, uh, you know, Bison's probably going to be using that for a mix-up game. Yeah, it says, you know, basically get ready for it to explode and then, you know, try to take advantage of what setups you could try to do. Okay, Shadow Rise. So this is uh, the launch here. Quick high reaching jump. You can do the Devil's Reverse. Uh, yeah, and the head press. Yep, right there. Elusive. We're back to aerial elusive bison here. He can he can land back to the corner again. Yeah. So on startup, you are invincible as long as you do the overdrive version and you're spending the bars for it. That's for Shadow Rise. He keeps shaking his hand like that. I, that's making me think about my hand. So I'm like, you know what? I might just play him simply because he keeps shaking his hand and going, oh my god, my hand hurts. I'm like, this is somebody that knows what the heck I'm talking about here. <laughs> okay, so if you do the EX version of the uh, Shadow Rise into the head press, it's a multi-hit. If it's blocked... You have an opportunity to keep everything going because you're plus. Bam. So you can still take a turn. Because they're in block stun at that point. Okay, 
Okay, need press nightmare here. Okay, so that is his brand new uh, back fist combo, and and Jury has the psycho mine on her, right? So that's his level one. Psycho Punisher. That's his level two, and it's reminiscent to Street Fighter Four. You can uh, you can decide how far or how close you want to go. This is his uh, level three. got some, even though Jury came up, I think it looks like it has some nice range to it. He, he'll, he would shoot across. Hmm. That's something. Hmm. Very good. How are you there? What's up? What's up? So, very, very good. Very exciting things um, here for Bison. And he is uh, going to be available specifically on June 26th. There's a couple of different ways that you can get the second uh, season DLC package. So if you want to, what you can do is, is you can purchase the regular DLC package. And that's going to have Bison, Summertime Bison, Fall Terry, Bogard, uh, SNK. Wintertime is going to be my uh, SNK. Springtime is going to be Elena. You can get all of them with, uh, I believe, colors one through three in the first initial uh, kit. Then you can get the ultimate, which has, I believe, two stages, the colors all the way to ten, and uh, obviously all the characters and everything. And it, it includes uh, upcoming uh, costumes, DLC, DLC costumes. Or you can just purchase the characters on their own. So if you go, oh man, you know, I just really want to buy uh, Elena. Uh, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm not, I'm not too interested in uh, Terry, Mai, or Bison. Then you can just wait for spring when she comes through. Uh, spend the spend the money or the uh, the fight the fight points on her, and then you know you got her. So you could do that instead. There's all kinds of different ways that you can um, work this all out for uh, getting your DLC characters if you're interested in them. So very very cool there. Very cool, and um, yeah, a nice new move set there for Bison. His general game plan is still traditionally the same. Uh, heavy rushdown, big damage, aerial uh, moves, and everything like that. Uh, so keeping pressure from the air, keeping pressure on the ground. And uh, the only thing that I noticed that he does not have access to as of right now is his teleport. Uh, I don't see Bison's teleport in there, but he does have access to everything else. So that's very, very cool. Um, 
uh, the Psycho Mines are a neat um, pressure tool. I think it's a very good idea that they added that in. It is going to cause uh, additional stress and mental pressure on the opponents the more that you land them. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to look forward to that. That's going to be pretty neat. I want to see what he's going to be about. Problem X has been posting that he's going to be uh, really interested in trying uh, this version of Bison out. So we'll see. We'll see how he does with that. Yeah. Yeah, very close. Uh, very, very close there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this review of the um, Capcom and Marvel Showcase and the moveset for M. Bison for Street Fighter VI. And that's going to end it for our review there. I think it was a I think it was a good one. <laughs>